the last pillar of the Patriots dynasty has fallen. After 24 years, head coach Bill Belichick is leaving the team. There's so many fond memories and, and uh, thoughts that I you know, think about the Patriots and, and uh, I'll always be a Patriot, excited for the future, uh, but always very, very appreciative of the opportunity here, the support here. For more on the split and what may be next, let's bring in GBH News reporter Esteban Bustillos, who's at Gillette Stadium. So, Esteban, I don't think there was an audible gasp when this was announced. Yeah. Hey, Liz, I think, as you said, not an audible gasp. This had been sort of in the tea leaves for a little bit, right? I mean, obviously, the Patriots didn't have a great year this year. Year before, missed the playoffs. Uh, year before that, made it to the playoffs, lost in the first rounds. That wasn't really the expectation, the standard that had been there under Bill Belichick for these past, for his tenure here uh, in New England. So, yeah, this is it. There was a sense that maybe there was a change going to come. Um, but just to see it happen and to see Bill Belichick no longer be part of the New England Patriots is still, it's, uh, it's, it's, mind-blowing and it's difficult to almost comprehend right so but this was a parting of ways this wasn't a firing we knew that wasn't going to happen i think uh Kraft had made it clear you know even saying at one point right. that belichick should go on his own terms or when the time comes or right. you know it was clear that wasn't going to happen let's hear uh kind of how he uh how he joked a little bit about the departure this is Kraft. It'll be difficult to see him in a cutoff hoodie on the sideline, but I will always continue to wish him continued success, except when he's playing our beloved Patriots. Except for that moment. <laughs> uh, so Kraft called, I mean, he, he called this a marriage, you know, the greatest marriage in, you know, 24 right. years plus. So, um, do you think people are really going to be wondering, Belichick without Boston, what is he? But, you know, remind us, this is, you know, this is a guy with an enormous record. Right. I mean, he's even before he came to the Patriots uh, in 2000, he was well regarded as as one of the great football minds. And I think now he is solidified as maybe the greatest football mind that's ever been you know i don't really enjoy those sort of superlatives like that uh, but definitely just one of the greatest uh who's ever been on the field who's ever been uh just on the sideline trying to figure out trying to break down other teams he's done it so so well so no i, I, I belichick without the patriots i i know it's intriguing but Regardless of where he is, he's always going to be one of the the best to ever do. And to, to your point that you said about Kraft, you know, he made it very clear multiple times throughout the press conference today. This was an amicable split. He said himself, this was amicable. He didn't want to seem like, oh, like they're trying to, to they're going against each other. This was a mutual parting of ways. This couldn't have been done, I think, in a more smooth way to transition out of this uh, relationship. And I think that may have been one of the reasons why they wanted to do it now. If you waited another season and things were made to be rocky and the chorus of, oh, is he going to go? Is he going to stay? That became that became louder. This may have been an entirely different situation if Belichick stayed on longer than, than he has. So, yeah, and it wasn't just that last, you know, 17-3 game with the Jets that was the final disaster. A lot of people would say the writing was on the wall back in November, even maybe earlier, but that game in Germany against the Colts, I think, you know, you can explain, but the NFL playing overseas more, trying to bring the brand around the world. World. So, you know, when they were playing um, that game in Germany, I think Kraft was coming out and saying this is a really important thing. And after a disastrous game, he said, you know, it was pretty ugly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, and, and you know the the Patriots. They as the NFL continues to try to expand its global reach, they have a, a large fan base in Germany specifically. So. For them to lose that way, that was uh, a big knock uh, against the franchise, uh, against the team. Um, so I think that was an embarrassing defeat. Uh, but Kraft also said today, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, how the team has performed over these past few years uh, hasn't been the standard. So I think there there was a need. He he, I think he saw a need to change, not just from this year, but even going beyond that. And and maybe those inflection points became even louder and, or even more uh, obvious 
uh, in this past season. But it, the, the need for change has it seems to have been there for a little while. OK, so what about that need for change? Uh, do you have any odds on who's next? There's a lot of names out there. Jared yeah. Mayo, Mike Vrabel. Some people are saying Jim Harbaugh. I mean, there are seven open positions, something like that, for head coaches in the NFL right now. I don't right. know if that's, you know, unusually large, but um, there's a lot of potential for movement here. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, Mike Vrabel, the uh, former Tennessee Titans head coach, uh, that, that's a name that's, good, that's been tossed out uh, almost immediately since, since he, he got fired from Tennessee. Uh, Gerard Mayo, who's, uh, who's on the staff currently, um, both for former players uh, here in New England, uh, both highly regarded in, in that sense. Uh, as you mentioned, Jim Harbaugh just won the national championship with the University of Michigan. I, I don't know if, if, if anybody has a real idea. I think it, there's a lot of talk. Uh, there'll, there'll be reports of sources say this, sources say that. Uh, the truth is, I don't think anybody knows. And, uh, but w what Kraft did say today is he said, look, uh, me, he said this, uh, besides my family, is, is, is the most important uh, asset in my life. I think, I think that's how he, how he stated it in those words. Um, and he's very committed to winning. And he wants, he said very specifically, I want to get us someone who will get us back to the playoffs and uh, get us back to winning in the playoffs. Um, that's a tall task uh, for any team uh, to do. Uh, only seven spots in each conference that, that make it to the playoffs. And specifically, it's an even taller task here to live up to the expectations that were set by Bill Belichick. Um, so it's going to be one of the most fascinating coaching searches uh, I think we'll ever see in the history of the NFL. And any clues on uh, where Belichick might be headed? He didn't say one way or the other if he's going to stay in coaching or not, if he's going to retire. Who knows? I will say if, if he does want to remain in the NFL, if he does want to remain in coaching in general, there will be no shortage of teams uh, with an empty coach, coaching vacancy who would be glad uh, overjoyed to to take him even teams that have coaches right now um who maybe they don't perform uh, as well as they want to in the playoffs etc uh i i wouldn't be shocked to see any number of teams uh take him but no i, I have i don't think any again i don't think anybody has any solid clue on, on what the next steps are. Yeah, I mean, Belichick himself said it seemed to indicate he has a lot more in the tank uh, right. to go, even, you know, when he was still in his position there. But uh, so it is hard to say what will happen. Uh, are you going to be sad to uh, not be reporting on the, uh, <laughs> the coach who, you know, gave you these long, deep, rich answers, actually? Uh, and I think he... Uh, he sort of gave a parting gesture to reporters. Let's listen to what he had to say. It's immediate for you guys. I, I don't know that anybody's gotten more coverage than, uh, than I have or we have in the past 24 years. Um, you know, it, meet with you guys a lot. Respect what you do. Um, you know, you're a voice to the fans. and uh, Even though we don't always see eye to eye all the time. Most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, I do respect what you do. You going to miss that? <laughs> You know, I that was one of the funnier parts of, of today to me. Um, I, I've never seen him that that just sort of uh, just relaxed uh, with, with the press in, in that way. So uh, that's I, I think people are just going to miss just having someone who's so historic in, in the building uh, overall. You know, it, it, you, you don't talk to many coaches and many athletes, uh, anybody in the professional sports world who has the accolades, the resume that he does. Um, I, I, I am really interested to see now whichever market he goes to, whichever team he goes to, how that press corps uh, will be prepared to deal with the, the day in and day out of, of the, uh, the aura of, of Bill Belichick and, and uh, his very sort of blunt style of answering questions, uh, it, it'll be fun to see. Yeah, no, my favorite description of him was he was like your high school history teacher, sort of. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and uh, it, you know, even Kraft said one, one of his, his answers today to questions like, oh, like, you know, somebody asked him, what, what did you learn most from, from Belichick? And, and Kraft said, you know, he could, it was like, it was like unlike anything he had ever seen where he could recall plays from 30 years ago just on on the fly um yeah he's a, a football historian a uh a, a strategical expert and uh, i'm sure anywhere he goes he his skills will be uh, highly regarded
Well, when it comes to the emotion and the reminiscences, this is just the beginning for Boston. Yeah. I, I'm sure you're, you could guarantee it. Thank you so much, Esteban Bustillos, for uh, helping us sort through that. Hope we can do this again. Thanks, Liz.